16. Neurofibromatosis Type 1 Mercedes Christensen of Boise, Idaho was 19 years old when she was diagnosed with a genetic condition called neurofibromatosis NF type 1, which causes benign cysts to grow on the nerves and skin. It can come with other painful and uncomfortable symptoms and complications, including seizures, learning difficulties, digestive issues, and visual impairment. Doctors told Mercedes that the handful of tumors she experienced were nothing serious, but after she gave birth to her first child at age 29, hormonal changes caused her entire face and body to become covered in growths. During a 2023 interview with The Mirror, she estimated that she had around 200 cysts. The disfiguring condition understandably had a negative impact on Mercedes' mental health. At one point, she only left her home when it was absolutely necessary, and she's currently unemployed due to her appearance. But her perspective changed after she learned that the neurofibromatosis that she suffered from is genetic. It has a 50-50 chance of being passed on to a patient's children, and two of her children have been diagnosed with it. By then, Mercedes had become accustomed to receiving hateful remarks from strangers based solely on her appearance but she wanted her kids to feel confident stepping out into public and living normal lives. So she combated her own fears for the sake of setting a healthy example for them. In a viral TikTok video, Mercedes said that some people have even gone as far as telling her that she should have never had kids. She dismissed the haters by reminding them that her life isn't their business and that their comments are hurtful. She also explained that her kids don't have the condition as badly as she does, and that she hopes they never do. 15. Progeria In recent years, a young girl from Texas named Adalia Rose became internet famous for sharing her journey with progeria on social media. Progeria is an extremely rare genetic disorder that causes children to age rapidly. Patients appear healthy at birth, with the earliest signs typically appearing within the first two years of life. Initial symptoms include hair loss, slowed growth, and loss of fat tissue. Children with progeria live to age 15 on average, with most passing away from heart problems and strokes. In a world of more than 7 billion people, Adalia Rose was one of just 500 who suffered from progeria. Over a four-year period starting in 2018, she garnered hundreds of millions of views on her YouTube channel and gained a sizable Facebook following. Speaking in a video shortly after Adalia's internet debut, her mother, Natalia Pelante, said that her daughter had bad days where she wished she looked different. She wished that she was taller, had hair, and could live like most other people. Adalia received an outpouring of support from her followers, who complimented her for refusing to let her setbacks stop her from living life to the fullest. Her passing in 2022 at the age of 15 generated an equally compelling response from fans all over the world who shared their sympathies with the family and reflected on how Adalia inspired them over the years. 14. Poland Syndrome As a young woman, UK resident Rebecca Butcher noticed that only one of her breasts was growing. Her doctor told her that uneven chest growth was normal and not to worry about it, that the situation would eventually even itself out. But that never happened, and as the asymmetry became more pronounced, Rebecca began to suspect that she was experiencing something abnormal. With doctors at a loss to explain what was wrong, she did her own research online and discovered the existence of Poland syndrome, a rare genetic disorder characterized by missing or undeveloped chest muscles on one side of the body. When Rebecca shared her suspicions with her doctor, he agreed that she likely had the condition, but said that he couldn't diagnose her because he didn't know enough about it. In a viral TikTok video, the young woman explained that her doctor said he never studied Poland syndrome in medical school because it was deemed highly unlikely that he would ever encounter it. Rebecca visited at least 11 medical experts who all gave different opinions of what they thought her affliction might be and tried to promote the growth of her smaller side by taking hormones for five years. 
but it did no good, and she eventually quit relying on doctors for answers. She instead found solace in the Poland Syndrome community, who welcomed her with open arms. Her TikTok followers also offered their support after hearing her story, which garnered millions of views over a several-month period in 2022. Some followers recommended getting an implant to make herself more symmetrical, but Rebecca said that she doesn't want one and that she's come to accept her condition, even though she doesn't think she'll ever truly know much about it. 13. Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Outbreak Located in the West Otago region of New Zealand's South Island, Tapanui is home to around 800 people. In 1984, a mysterious epidemic broke out in the town, generating international interest as experts worked to identify the illness. Nicknamed the Tapanui Flu, it was characterized by flu-like symptoms followed by prolonged fatigue. Patients also reported experiencing headaches, mood changes, joint and muscle pain, diarrhea, upper respiratory problems, and sleep disruptions. While attempting to trace the origins of the sickness, researchers ruled out water pollution, zoonotic illness, exposure to agricultural chemicals, and overdoses of the mineral selenium as likely causes, leading them to conclude that a mystery virus was most likely to blame. There was no known cure, and in some cases, it took years for patients to fully regain their health. Dr. Peter Snow, who was working as a general physician in Tapanui during the outbreak, is credited with identifying the illness as myologic encephalopathy, better known as chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS. In 2012, a study demonstrated a possible link between the illness and a retrovirus, but the information fell short of proving a direct connection between CFS and viral infections. Outbreaks have occurred in other parts of the world, including the US, Hong Kong, Europe, Australia, and elsewhere. An estimated 25% of CFS patients suffer from a severe or very severe case of the illness, which often renders them bed or wheelchair bound, incapable of working or studying, and dependent on others for basic self-care. But until experts learn more about CFS, they won't be able to effectively treat it. For now, it means that patients have little choice other than to ride it out and hope they're lucky enough to make a full and relatively fast recovery. 12. Rose Fungus Infection In an extremely rare case of a plant pathogen making the jump to its first known human host, a 61-year-old man in eastern India was infected by a fungus that typically attacks and kills rose plants. He had no idea what was wrong with him when he showed up at an emergency room with a sore throat, cough, fatigue, and difficulty swallowing. The symptoms had started three months earlier. Medical tests showed that the patient had an abscess on his windpipe, indicating the presence of an infection. And after failing to identify the fungus in the man's mucus, doctors grew it in a petri dish and mailed it to the World Health Organization. They were shocked when the fungus was identified as Chondrosterium purpureum, which causes a disease called silver leaf in plants and trees belonging to the rose family. The patient denied working with or going near the pathogen, making it unclear how he caught it in the first place. But he worked as a plant scientist, so it feels easy to believe that he somehow must have inadvertently exposed himself to it while going about his normal workday. Thankfully though, doctors were able to clean up the abscess, and the infection went away with the help of antibiotics. 11. Atypical Capgrass Syndrome In 2015, a team of experts conducted a case study on a 78-year-old Frenchman who believed that a stranger was living in his house. Known only as Mr. B, known only as Mr. B, he said that the unwelcome guest looked just like him and never left his bathroom mirror. The senior citizen was aware of the similarities in appearance, yet he didn't believe that he was looking at his reflection. He was firmly convinced that there was another person in his home and brought food in the bathroom with two sets of cutlery so he could share meals with his body double. When Mr. B told his daughter that his doppelganger had gotten aggressive, she became concerned for his well-being and took him to the hospital. Doctors diagnosed him with something called atypical capgrass syndrome. 
In normal cases of Capgras syndrome, a patient believes that a loved one has been replaced by an imposter. The elderly French gentleman's case was considered atypical because it didn't involve anyone besides himself. He was prescribed antipsychotic medication for his delusions and anti-anxiety medication because he'd grown afraid of living at his home, where he believed a hostile stranger was also residing. After taking the meds for three months, his condition improved, and he told doctors that the stranger was no longer there. Atypical Capgras syndrome is so rare that it's practically unheard of, but this wasn't the first case of its kind to be documented in medical records. There are at least two recorded previous cases dating back to the late 1960s and the late 80s, with the first involving a 61-year-old New Zealand woman who thought she was looking at a double of herself in the mirror. Experts don't know what causes atypical Capgras syndrome. One school of thought suggests that it's similar to prosopagnosia, or face blindness, which is when a person loses their ability to recognize faces. The authors of the 2015 report, including a doctor who treated Mr. B, believe that atypical Capgras syndrome is more complicated than both face blindness and typical Capgras syndrome. According to the case study, people with face blindness still react emotionally to seeing the faces of people they know, even if they don't recognize those individuals. In these cases, experts believe that patients suffer from damage to a part of the brain known as the overt pathway, which sustains facial recognition. Patients with Capgras syndrome recognize familiar faces but show no emotional reaction, indicating the possibility of damage to the covert pathway, which sustains familiarity. People with atypical Capgras syndrome who show no emotional reaction to faces and recognize themselves as strangers are thought to suffer from impaired covert and overt pathways. While antipsychotic medications appear to help improve the condition, researchers know very little about this rare phenomenon. More study is needed, which unfortunately means that they need more cases to learn from. 10. Alien Hand Syndrome also known as Archaic Hand, or Dr. Strangelove Syndrome, Alien Hand Syndrome, AHS, is characterized by the loss of control over one of the hands. The hand seems to take on a mind of its own, leading to bizarre involuntary movements that look completely deliberate, like grabbing objects, or themselves, levitating, stroking one's face or hair, and interrupting everyday tasks like shaving and eating and in some cases, patients are unable to restrain their out-of-control hand. In one case dating back to the early 1970s, a 67-year-old man's alien hand became so disruptive that it would even remove his clothing against his wishes. Like with many patients, it began after he suffered a stroke. A 77-year-old woman experienced a similar loss of control over one of her hands after having a stroke in 2014. She realized that something was wrong when she stroked her own face and hair for a half hour while watching TV. Alien hand syndrome is extremely rare. It tends to appear after a patient suffers a stroke, a brain tumor, an infection, or a neurodegenerative disease. There are no specific criteria for diagnosing the condition, and treatments for it are lacking. In some cases, AHS goes away on its own, while other patients are sometimes able to overcome it through rehabilitation and therapy. The exact cause of the condition is also unknown, but it's thought to be associated with damage to a bundle of nerves called the corpus callosum, which connects the two hemispheres of the brain. Given its rarity and the fact that it's not deadly, nobody's really scrambling to better understand or cure alien hand syndrome. There are only a handful of recorded cases, and the amount of unreported cases isn't thought to be big enough to affect a significant number of people. 9. Rare Transplant Parasites In 2014, three medical patients experienced sudden brain problems shortly after receiving organ transplants from the same donor. The first person to fall ill was a man who received a kidney from a 43-year-old female donor who died from a stroke two months earlier. He soon developed a fever and began behaving differently, causing doctors to fear that he was among the 1-2% to 2 of organ recipients who contracted an infection from their donor. 
Their suspicions grew after they discovered that another patient who'd received the donor's liver had started suffering from tremors and having difficulty walking. A third individual who received the woman's heart and kidney had been hospitalized with encephalitis, or inflammation of the brain. Doctors were stumped when all three patients tested negative for a number of infections. The kidney transplant patient's condition continued to deteriorate, and he passed away about two months after their first symptoms appeared. Tissue taken during his autopsy tested positive for a single-celled parasite called encephalitisune cuniculi, and the two surviving organ recipients also tested positive. In most cases, healthy people who contract the parasite not only survive, but they may only experience mild symptoms or none at all. They also typically suffer gastrointestinal symptoms, unlike the organ recipients who are at a higher risk of brain effects and serious illness due to the immune-suppressing drugs they were required to take to prevent their bodies from rejecting their new organs. Thankfully though, doctors were able to effectively treat the two surviving patients, whose neurological symptoms subsided with medication. But the case caused some researchers to realize how little experts know about E. cuniculi. Dr. Rachel Smith, who led a study on the parasite, told Live Science that its effects on healthy people are unclear. She believes that the organ donor may have lived with the parasite symptom-free up until her death. It's also unknown whether the parasite goes away on its own in cases involving healthy people. But the main takeaway of the study is that it's a lot more common than the medical community previously realized. 8. Elephantiasis also known as lymphatic filariasis. Elephantiasis is a tropical parasite infection that's transmitted to humans by infected mosquitoes. Many sufferers catch it at a young age, but don't suffer noticeable symptoms until adulthood, by which point the parasite has already caused significant damage to their lymphatic system. The damage blocks a person's lymph vessels, causing a backup of fluid in certain parts of the body. In most cases, the blockage causes a patient's limb or genitals to swell massively. And oftentimes, only one limb swells, while the other remains its normal size. Elephantiasis comes with other unpleasant symptoms, including what's known as acute filarial attacks. These episodes come with a fever, additional swelling, and peeling skin. For its sufferers, the condition is both alienating and financially devastating. It interferes with a person's social and romantic life, prevents them from working, impedes their mobility, and subjects them to a judgmental stigma that can make simple tasks like going to the store extremely anxiety-inducing. There's no cure for elephantiasis, but it can be somewhat controlled through the use of antibiotics, especially in its early stages. There have been numerous campaigns to eliminate the condition, which affects an estimated 120 million people worldwide. The World Health Organization spent 10 years trying to stop the spread of the parasite, but these efforts have been met with successes and failures. So getting rid of the disease for good is proving to be easier said than done. 7. Machado-Joseph Disease Located in the tropical waters off Australia's Northern Territory in the Gulf of Carpentaria, Groot Island is home to members of the Aboriginal Anindil Yakwa culture. The island has the world's highest concentration and most severe strain of a debilitating neurodegenerative condition called Machado-Joseph disease, MJD, which begins with muscle weakness. It eventually leads to locked-in syndrome, which is when a person is alert but can't move or talk. Caused by a chromosome defect, MJD causes the brain's neurons to die prematurely. As the cruel illness slowly robs a patient of their independence, they begin to suffer from incontinence, slurred speech, mobility issues, and difficulty swallowing. The person becomes completely dependent on others and is aware of everything going on around them but unable to participate. Children of parents who carry the gene defect that causes MJD have a 50% chance of getting the disease themselves. 
while those with a grandparent who carries the defect have a 25% chance of inheriting the disease. Roughly 5% of Groot Aylin's population is believed to either be at risk or actively suffering from the hereditary disease, which has no cure. And as of 2016, more than 650 people were deemed at risk, and at least 100 were considered symptomatic. According to MJD Foundation Chief Executive, the expected lifespan of someone with Machado Joseph disease is 20 years from the onset of symptoms. But people on Groot Aylins succumb to the illness much quicker, and they're being diagnosed at a younger age now than they were several decades ago. Speaking with news.com.au, Lindop said, it used to be people in their 30s or 40s first getting symptoms. Now we're seeing teenagers in wheelchairs. And the younger a person is when they're diagnosed, the quicker the disease seems to kill them. There's no known explanation for this phenomenon, known as anticipation onset. Lindop also said that the MJD gene can become more aggressive as it's passed on from one generation to the next. She explained that strains of varying strengths are prevalent in different parts of the world, with some being more aggressive than others. Researchers can't seem to agree on the disease's origins or why its numbers and severity are so extreme on Groot Aylant. In the absence of a cure or an effective treatment, the best advice experts can give is for those who have MJD to make healthy choices and stay as active as they can for their physical, mental, and social well-being. But unfortunately, it's inevitable that within 10 to 15 years, a patient will be unable to do much, if anything, for themselves. 6. Ergotism In 2020, a team of medical researchers wrote about a 24-year-old Indian woman who went to her doctor complaining of a severe burning sensation in her legs. She was struggling to walk, her feet were discolored, and her legs felt cold to the touch. A CT scan revealed that the arteries in her legs had constricted, reducing the blood flow to her lower limbs. Four days earlier, the patient had started taking a migraine medication called ergotamine. Doctors quickly figured out that she was suffering from a disease called ergotism, or ergot poisoning, which is caused by ingesting something that's contaminated with a fungus called claviceps purpurea. In addition to causing the legs to feel like they're burning, the illness can cause gangrene, convulsions, and hallucinations. Outbreaks were relatively commonplace in medieval times due to people eating tainted rye. Back then, the condition was called St. Anthony's Fire, and some modern-day researchers believe it could have been the cause for the strange behavior that was witnessed among the women in the Salem Witch Trials. But there are some medicinal benefits to the fungus, which was a key ingredient in the Indian patient's migraine medication. It's usually harmless in moderation, but in some cases, even normal doses can cause ergotism. When she started taking the medication, the woman was also on an antiretroviral drug to treat HIV, which is known to increase the chances of a patient developing ergotism. By the time doctors treated the disease with blood thinners, it was too late to save one of her toes from gangrene. The toe was amputated, but the woman otherwise went on to make a full and quick recovery. 5. Rabies In a shocking misdiagnosis that was covered in a 2015 case study, a 52-year-old Missouri man went to an emergency room complaining of sudden and severe pain in his neck and tingling in one of his arms. Assuming he was suffering from standard muscle and joint pain, the treating physician prescribed a muscle relaxant called cyclobenzaprine. However, the patient's condition only worsened overnight, prompting him to return to the hospital the next day with a fever. He was also shaking and sweating. Based on his symptoms, the doctor diagnosed him with serotonin syndrome, which can occur when certain medications, including the muscle relaxant he was prescribed the day before, trigger an over-release of the brain chemical serotonin. The man was admitted to the hospital, where he refused to drink water or have an oxygen tube placed in his nose, and began experiencing body tremors. Doctors would eventually realize that he was showing telltale signs of rabies, including irrational fears of water and air. But they only figured this out after testing him for an array of other infectious diseases, 
including syphilis, herpes, and the West Nile virus. Finally, after learning from the man's family that he enjoyed photographing wildlife as a hobby, doctors realized that he might have rabies. And sure enough, a test came back positive for a strain of the virus associated with the tricolored bat. By then, though, it was too late to save the patient's life. After being exposed to the rabies virus, an adult human must get the vaccine before symptoms appear. Once the virus takes hold, cases are nearly 100% fatal. Every year, an estimated 50,000 people die from rabies, and only 14 are known to have ever survived after the onset of symptoms. Left with no other choice, medical staff kept the man as comfortable as possible as he endured what can only be described as an excruciating demise. His organs eventually began to shut down, and he was put on life support until his family made the agonizing decision to take him off the ventilator. While the unusual tragedy marked only the second case of a human contracting rabies in Missouri since 1959, the misdiagnosis of the man's condition alerted researchers to the need for doctors to think out of the box when diagnosing ailments that are mysterious in nature, or possibly mimicking another ailment. According to the team who wrote the case study, many patients don't notice when they've been bitten by a bat, which explains why the patient himself never mentioned rabies as a possibility. 4. Gluten Psychosis while studying for her PhD in 2014, a 37-year-old American woman suddenly became paranoid and delusional. It started with her belief that her friends and acquaintances were bad-mouthing her and evolved into more extreme thoughts and behaviors. She eventually became convinced that her family was poisoning her and began doing completely out-of-character things, like stealing and acting belligerent. Desperate to get her life back on track, the woman visited a psychiatric hospital in Massachusetts. Based on her symptoms, doctors prescribed antipsychotic medications. But they did little, if anything, to alleviate her suffering. Unsure of what else to do, the hospital released her. A few months later, the woman's apartment was burglarized. She believed her parents had committed the crime and threatened them, landing her in the custody of a state psychiatric hospital. During her time there, doctors noticed that she was experiencing nutritional deficiencies and other symptoms of possible physical ailments. Further testing revealed that the patient was suffering from thyroid disease. She also had celiac disease, which is when the consumption of gluten triggers an immune response that attacks the small intestine. Believing that her doctors were being deceitful, the woman refused to adopt a gluten-free diet and her life continued to fall apart following her release from the hospital. She lost her job, became homeless, and became estranged from her family, who obtained an order of protection against her due to her erratic behavior. During her next hospital stint, doctors put her on a gluten-free diet. Over the next three months, her psychiatric symptoms mostly went away, making it clear that she had a rare proneness to gluten-induced psychosis. The patient asked her doctor to study the effects of gluten on her behavior in a controlled environment. But before it could happen, she accidentally consumed gluten and became symptomatic on her own. She soon landed in jail for allegedly trying to kill her parents. According to the doctors who treated the woman, when she was in a normal state of mind, she knew that consuming gluten would cause her life to derail. But once it happened, she became too lost and confused to understand the cause behind her mental state. One of her treating physicians, celiac disease expert Dr. Alessio Fasano, described the woman's case as more complicated than some of the others he's treated. He attributes this to the possibility that the patient may have had an existing psychiatric problem that was exacerbated by gluten. However, it was clear that gluten affected her in major enough ways to render her incapable of living a normal life when she consumed it. 3. Super Gonorrhea The next item on today's list is not only strange and sad, it's downright scary. While vacationing in Cambodia in April 2022, an Austrian man in his 50s engaged in unprotected intimacy with a prostitute. And not long after that, he noticed a burning sensation while he urinated. 
along with a few other highly unpleasant symptoms. He visited the doctor, tested positive for gonorrhea, and received the standard antibiotics that are typically prescribed for the STI. The medication alleviated the man's symptoms, but he continued to test positive for the disease. It was unlike other strains of gonorrhea that the doctors who treated him were familiar with. They classified it as extensively drug resistant, which is a professional sounding way of saying that it refused to go away despite repeated efforts to treat it. Luckily though, the man was eventually cured after undergoing a treatment of combined antibiotics, which most likely means that it spread to other people. This is exactly what doctors feared after discovering the highly resilient strain of gonorrhea, which they believe could render many cases of the disease untreatable. In a case study report, Dr. Sonja Pleninger described this and other variations of super gonorrhea as a major global public health threat. To prevent a catastrophe, the team that conducted the study recommended the urgent development of new medications and a vaccine that's capable of fighting super gonorrhea. After all, STIs spread fast, and the clock is ticking. 2. Cotard Syndrome also known as Cotard's Delusion or Walking Corpse Syndrome. Cotard's Syndrome is a rare mental disorder characterized by a person's denial of their own existence. This comes in several forms, including the belief that oneself is dead or doesn't exist, the delusion that a person's own body is decomposing, and or that they no longer have their internal organs, body parts, blood supply, or soul. Patients often stop taking care of themselves, isolate to an extreme degree, and refuse to eat, since they believe they're dead and therefore don't need food. Only a handful of patients have been diagnosed with Cotard syndrome since it was first recognized as a medical condition in the 17th century. According to a 2008 case study, most sufferers have already been diagnosed with a psychotic disorder, mood disorder, brain damage, and other medical conditions. The report discussed a 53-year-old Filipino woman known only as Miss L, whose family called 911 after she began complaining that she smelled like a rotting corpse. She asked her relatives to take her to a morgue so she could be with dead people. And she expressed other delusions, including her belief that emergency medical responders were trying to light her house on fire. At the time, the woman had only been living in the United States for about a month, and in addition to her irrational behavior, she told doctors that she'd grown depressed and sleepy, with a decreased appetite and energy levels. Her symptoms improved with antidepressant and anti-schizophrenia medications, but she was uncooperative with treatment until her family sought a court order to keep her hospitalized. In another case, a 65-year-old schoolteacher known as Mr. B became depressed and gradually developed increasingly delusional beliefs. It began with feelings of worthlessness, anxiety, hopelessness, guilt, and a lack of a desire to socialize. Over time, Mr. B started to believe that his brain and other organs had shut down and that his house was going to collapse. He also began to worry that he was going to spread a deadly illness to the people in his community. His symptoms were severe, but almost disappeared entirely with a combination of psychiatric medication and electroconvulsive shock treatments. In 2015, British military veteran Warren McKinley developed walking corpse syndrome after serving in Bosnia and getting into a motorcycle accident. He became fully convinced that he was a ghost, or as he put it, a walking dead man. McKinley stopped eating, became volatile, experienced memory problems, and holed up inside his room for hours at a time, refusing to talk to his wife and family. Luckily though, he eventually began to overcome his Cotard syndrome after entering rehab, where he met a fellow veteran who also suffered from the bizarre disorder. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. One. Baboon Syndrome When a 40-year-old Scottish man was unable to swallow the antibiotic pills his doctor prescribed for tonsillitis, he was put on a course of intravenous antibiotics and a steroid to reduce inflammation. 
but within a day of starting the new regimen, a large rash broke out on his groin and elbow. The doctor assumed that the man was experiencing an allergic reaction to penicillin and prescribed a different antibiotic. It helped to alleviate his tonsillitis symptoms, but the rash continued to spread and the skin in his groin area was showing signs of necrosis or tissue death. By the time he returned to the hospital, his armpits, chest, and buttocks had turned bright red, and the rash had become painful. After ruling out the presence of flesh-eating bacteria, doctors concluded that the patient was suffering from a severe reaction known as baboon syndrome, which is most prevalent among adult males for unknown reasons. During what amounted to an 11-day hospital stay, the man went off antibiotics and received steroids for his rash. It cleared up and he was finally sent home. Baboon syndrome is most commonly caused by exposure to penicillin, nickel, or mercury. Certain chemotherapy treatments, heartburn drugs, and biological agents are also known to cause the condition. Symptoms typically appear sometime between a few hours and a few days after exposure but recovery can take up to three weeks in certain cases. Nine, the man with the world's most bulbous nose. Patrick, a retired crane operator from Montana, suffered from the unsightly effects of rhinophema, a progressive skin condition that causes scar-like tissue to grow on the nose. It started while he was working in Las Vegas under the harsh desert sun. He applied sunscreen, but it didn't really help, and Patrick's nose grew increasingly red and irritated. It also just grew, eventually reaching double its original size. The weight of the growth began making it difficult to breathe, prompting Patrick to reach out to Dr. Sandra Lee, better known by the name of her hit show, Dr. Pimple Popper. Have you seen her show? Anyways, sadly by then, his grandchildren had become scared of him because of his nose. He said he wanted the roughness removed and to look presentable again. Dr. Lee called it the most advanced case of rhinophema she'd ever seen, but she was determined to help Patrick get his life back. Using an electric cauterizer, she burned away years worth of excess skin. It was the first of at least two procedures he needed, and its purpose was to reduce the swelling in Patrick's nose. The next time he went in, Dr. Lee scraped more of the skin away. By then, he was already looking like a brand new person. It's probably safe to say that Patrick's grandchildren no longer feared him from that day going forward. Eight, flesh-eating facial ulcers. Have you ever had an ulcer? A few months ago, 19-year-old Kirsten Cowell noticed that painful boils were appearing on her face. Assuming they'd go away on their own, the British teenager carried on with life as usual. But the open sores got even worse, barreling as much as 0.8 inches deep into her flesh. They seep pus and are covered in dark scabs and only seem to be getting worse. Kirsten and her mother, Allison, believe she suffers from a condition called pyroderma gangrenosum, which covers the body in large open sores, causing skin and tissue to rot. It's gotten so bad she won't leave her house. She can't anyway, because the sun agitates her wounds. She's in constant extreme pain and can only eat foods that don't require chewing because it hurts too much to move her muscles. The teen felt she had no other choice than to end her relationship and move back in with her mother, where she revolves her life around managing the condition. Doctors are treating Kirsten with antibiotics and steroids. Last month, they removed 18 of her scabs and cleaned her wounds. Her bandages are changed once daily, and she has to wrap her head in puppy pads so that pus doesn't get everywhere. Even worse than the physical pain is the hit to Kirsten's confidence that the flesh-eating condition has taken. She and her mother are hoping that the current treatment works so that she can feel beautiful again and resume her normal life. Seven 
turning into a Smurf. One day in 2008, an elderly man with blue skin appeared on the Today Show. His name was Paul Carrison, and you could almost mistake him for being a Smurf. He had started turning blue years earlier after trying to treat a host of medical ailments by rubbing a solution of colloidal silver all over his face. Carrison believed that the substance cured acid reflux and arthritis. He soon learned otherwise when, in 1993, his once freckled, fair-colored skin acquired a bluish tinge. It's a symptom of a condition called argyria which is caused by excessive exposure to chemical compounds of the element silver. Once a person turns blue for this reason, there's no undoing it. The condition is permanent. During his Today Show appearance in 2008, Carrison said that he was still drinking the dangerous substance. And this is a good example of why the government banned colloidal silver in 1999. It has a tendency to collect in the organs and cause serious damage. Carrison's unique hue turned him into somewhat of a recluse in 2007. He relocated to California from Washington seeking greater community acceptance. But his luck continued to worsen, and in 2012, Carrison lost his home while battling prostate cancer and a heart ailment. He ultimately ended up at a homeless shelter and then died of a heart attack in 2013. 6. COVID Toe COVID-19 comes with an array of bizarre and painful possible symptoms. In recent weeks, people have become curious about something called COVID Toe. After Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, said that he was experiencing it. The condition is caused by the body's immune response to the coronavirus. It turns the toes and sometimes the fingers purple, blue, or red. Cases of COVID toe appeared pretty early in the pandemic. The bizarre side effect isn't seen as often as some other symptoms, but it can last for months. Sometimes discoloration of the skin is the only symptom. In fact, many people don't even realize they have it until they look at their feet. But the condition can also be itchy and painful, and sometimes blisters develop with pus pooling underneath the skin. Dermatologist Dr. Amy Pollard told NBC Sports that experts think COVID toe may be a response to inflammation. Prolonged cases seem more common among patients battling long-haul COVID, according to an analysis which noted that one person reported experiencing COVID toe for six months. On average, however, symptoms last for 12 days. Did you get COVID? What was the worst symptom you experienced? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 5. Pandemic-Related Psoriasis 26-year-old Poppy Chalinor has been battling psoriasis since she was 13 years old. When England went into lockdown at the beginning of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, her condition worsened noticeably. Psoriasis is an incurable autoimmune disorder that causes skin to become itchy, red, and sore, and to flake and bleed. Chalonor began posting brutally honest photos of her flare-ups on social media to raise awareness about the condition and to remind young people that it's important to learn to live comfortably in their own skin. She named the account after her high school nickname, The Girl with Psoriasis, and recounted a time when someone described her skin as weird. Speaking with a mirror, she described how her classmates got to know who she was based on psoriasis alone, rather than her other attributes or her personality. Shortly after she first noticed the symptoms, the rash spread all over her body. Nothing that the dermatologist prescribed helped, leaving Chalinor itching and scratching all night long. Not wanting to appear different, she covered up the psoriasis as best she could by wearing long sleeves, even in the summer. At age 16, she told a boy she was interested in about the condition. He stopped talking to her because he was afraid it would affect him. 
But as Poppy blossomed into adulthood, she began to look at her psoriasis differently. She sees no reason to hide it. Chalinor's flare-ups are often brought on by stress, leaving her skin flaky and raw. After losing her father to an industrial accident two years ago, she sank into a depression and exacerbated the condition by scratching constantly. But she finally got help when her doctor said that the psoriasis had spread too far. Psoriasis affects people differently. It's incurable but can usually be managed. Still, it's extremely uncomfortable to live with and can cause deep emotional wounds, as you've seen with Poppy's case. 4. Morgellons Disease Some experts believe that Morgellons disease is a skin condition. Others think it's a mental disorder. But pretty much all of them agree on one thing. It's a total medical mystery. Common symptoms include the sensation that something is crawling on, stinging, or biting the skin. Sufferers also often report small fibers protruding from their skin, as well as mood, memory, and concentration problems. Canadian singer-songwriter Joni Mitchell has made headlines numerous times in recent decades for her alleged battle with the controversial disease. She claimed that when her Morgellons was at its worst, she couldn't leave her house or even wear clothing. Her legs cramped up, forcing her to crawl across the floor. Mitchell believed that different colored fibers stuck out of her skin and that they cannot be forensically identified as animal, vegetable, or mineral. Those who suffer from Morgellons disease will insist that it's not all in their head and that their symptoms are physically debilitating. But this condition is poorly understood by experts despite having first been described in the 17th century. Modern medicine has failed to explain or treat it. In 2001, a mother named Mary Latayo reportedly examined samples scraped from her son's skin under a microscope. He had long struggled with the symptoms of Morgellons, and Mary was determined to find answers. She claimed to have found unexplained fiber-like strands while examining some of his skin scrapings under a microscope. Doctors remained dismissive while the fight to understand Morgellons disease continue. In 2005, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, caved to mounting pressure to investigate the matter. Researchers took samples from 115 people claiming to suffer from Morgellons disease and found no parasites or bacteria that could be causing the disease. They concluded that it's simply a mass shared delusion, especially considered how many of the people who experience symptoms have histories of addiction and psychiatric ailments. Will scientists ever get to the bottom of what Morgellons disease is and what causes it? Only time will tell. 3. Deadly Shedding Epidermolic ichthyosis EI, is a rare condition that causes the skin to grow and shed up to 10 times faster than normal. The skin becomes so dry, blistered, and scale-like that it often makes it hard for the patient to move at all. In 2017, news outlets around the world reported on Maddie Hoffman, a nine-year-old Texas girl with EI. Because of her reddened appearance, strangers often mistook her for a burn victim. Kids bullied her at school for both her appearance and her odor, which is caused by the condition. Maddie's daily routine involves spending two hours removing dead skin cells and taking measures to prevent a potentially fatal infection. When she was born, doctors told her mother, Emily, that Maddie may not survive. Emily had to wait a week to hold her baby for the first time in an isolation room, wearing a mask and gloves. The daily scrubbing ritual not only helped to keep Maddie alive, it seems to have slightly improved her condition. She has one of the most severe forms of ichthyosis, which requires hours of treatment daily, according to Emily. The longer Maddie goes without her daily care routine, the higher her chances are of catching a potentially deadly infection. Her discomfort also grows as she accumulates more scale-like skin. An estimated one in every 200,000 people is affected by epidermolic ichthyosis. 
Babies born with this condition are at an especially high risk of dying from an infection, making it imperative to put them straight into quarantine. 2. Life-threatening to the touch Imagine having skin so fragile that it blistered and fell off just from being touched. That's a daily reality for people like 9-year-old Gabrielius Mirsorinkovas, who suffers from a rare genetic disorder called recessive dystrophic epidermolis bulloso, RDEB. Immediately after he was born, doctors noticed that he had lost skin from his leg. He's one of just 100 so-called butterfly children in the UK who are nicknamed for having skin as delicate as a butterfly's wing. Gabrielius' parents change his bandages at least three times a day and pop the dozens of blisters that form from coming into even slight contact with something. Yuck! He distracts himself from the pain by watching TV or playing video games. Watching Gabrielius endure the debilitating condition is heartbreaking to his mother, Olita who told the son the only way to help him is to hurt him. He can't do most things that boys his age love to do, like play sports, ride a bike without training wheels, or even eat the school lunch food because it's too hard. Sadly, there's no treatment for RDEB, which worsens with age and leaves many kids wheelchair-bound by the time they reach their teens. The damage to their skin that accumulates over the years often also leads to cancer. Researchers are working to develop an effective stem cell treatment that will hopefully lead to reduced inflammation and pain. So far, the results are promising. 1. Death by Herpes Death during pregnancy or childbirth is rare in first world countries, but it still occasionally happens. In May and July of 2018, two new mothers died from infections caused by the HSV-1 strain of the herpes simplex virus. HSV-1 is pretty common. It causes sores around the mouth and or genitals, and it's extremely rare for someone to die from it. Kimberly Sampson and Samantha Mokehi went to the same hospital where they both had C-sections and were in excruciating pain afterward. In both cases, the women received antibiotics for suspected bacterial infections, but the treatment didn't work, and they both died from herpes infections that were discovered when it was too late to save their lives. Thankfully, their babies were not infected. But one death from herpes is rare, and two herpes-related deaths within a few months of each other is practically unheard of. Neither Kimberly nor Samantha had herpes before. Their lack of natural immunity, coupled with the late stages of pregnancy, unfortunately spelled disaster for both. Suspicious that the two deaths were somehow linked, the women's families implored the coroner to investigate the matter. But the coroner declined, claiming that there was no connection between the tragedies. The family obtained access to the investigation documents, which show that the parts of the virus that were tested were identical between both cases, reflecting a herpes strain that is rare among London's last decade of cases. Neither woman had any sores or skin symptoms indicating that neither of them got it sexually or from skin-to-skin -skin contact. Moreover, the same surgeon and midwife had carried out both women's C-sections. One email pointed towards surgical contamination as the cause of the herpes infections and called for a sample to be taken from the surgeon involved. Speaking with the BBC, sexual health expert Peter Greenhouse speculated that the surgeon unknowingly passed the virus onto the women. But the trail seems to end there for now, leaving Kimberly and Samantha's grieving loved ones without the closure they so desperately seek. Would you rather have six fingers on each hand or experience a year-long period of amnesia? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.